So that was my reasonably easy piano version of the famous Coffin Dance meme song. This arrangement is perfect for you if you're just like myself, you have been playing the keyboard for less than one year and you start to feel some confidence in your right hand that you still struggle to do anything complicated with your left hand and you can barely play one or two notes at the same time. However, if you can do this, don't worry, you will be good. This song is actually called Astronomia and was created by a Russian EDM artist called Tony Iggy and then remixed by Vistone, which is the version that everyone knows and the version that we will be covering here. The whole song uses a very simple one, five, three, three progression, which means that we will be using only three different chords, D sharp minor, F major, and G minor. So first of all, get familiar with those chords. Mm, yeah, uh, they have some black keys on them. I know they can be intimidating if you're a total beginner. So if you are at that point, uh, don't worry. They will become your friends if you practice and practice. One thing that helps me a lot when practicing a specific sequence of chords is making them an arpeggio over multiple octaves in the keyboard. It works more or less like this. This arrangement has two different parts. So the first one is the main theme and it goes like this. I think it has a bit of a Tetris flavor to it. Anyway, the melody is just borrowing some notes here and there from the chords I mentioned before. Why is this important? Because in this arrangement, you will not be playing the whole triad, so the three notes in the chords. Instead, you will be using your finger one and two, so your thumb and your index to play only the first two notes in each chord, which the musicians, those whimsical creatures, like to call root and the third, root, third, and it goes on. The idea is that while your fingers one and two are root, third, root, third, the rest of your fingers will go to the piano disco and dance to the melody, something like this. You see, I start only with D sharp and G twice and then repeat for every note you play in the melody which goes D, C, A sharp. When you arrive to A sharp, the chord is being completed because that A sharp was the missing note in the triad of the D sharp minor. To add more bass, you will also be playing the root of the chord one octave lower as a long note with your left hand. So practice this. And when you feel confident enough, just repeat the same technique with the next chord. In the case of F major, it will become actually easier because you will be repeating only the root, not the third this time. Removing the third here will make the chord feel less static and repetitive and give a lighter feel to it so that we have a great contrast when going on to the next chord because we are going from major to minor and this will add extra emotion to the change. So the third and last chord in this progression will be G minor. But here you will be using an inversion. Look at this, instead of playing the root and the third from our regular GM chord, we're gonna take the fifth, which is the name for the upper note in a triad, in this case D, and that will flip it 
over my hand onto the octave below. It's still D, so this will still be my D. I mean, it's G minor anyway, but it's inverted. As this new lower D is playing, let's say, the row of the root in our inverted chord, we can call this chord G minor slash D. And it has more low frequency to it, so it sounds darker and helps build that contrast when going from major to minor. Enough music theory for now, back to the real world, you will be playing D and G. And again, play the melody with the other fingers, which go back and forth between A sharp and A. As you can see, A sharp and A are conveniently placed on top of our triad. That's exactly why I chose the inversion, because if we played the regular G minor chord, your right hand would have to travel a lot to find A sharp and A in the next octave. One funny thing here is that even if the chord is inverted and now the lowest note is D, the root keeps being G because this is still G minor, so the root needs to be G. That means that with your left hand, just like with the other chords, no exception, you keep playing the root note, G in this case. So this is how it's looking so far. As you practice and practice, you will be able to play it faster. And also stronger and with more excitement and dynamics. So the other part, which in the original song and in the meme goes before and after the main theme, because it's a sort of A, B, A, B thing. It's like a build up that goes over the same chord progression as before. So again, D sharp minor, F major, G minor twice. In this case, you're going to play the D sharp minor chord four times and then change the top note, remember the fifth in the triad, to a D, making it D sharp major seven and play it four times as well. So it goes like this. Next, the F major chord goes exactly the same. Play it four times. And then, instead of C, make it an F. And we are left with this chord that is still an F major because we are just replicating the root one octave higher. So we got... And finally, and this is one of the things I find the most interesting on this song, is that our friend the G minor gets substituted by G, D, F. I think that this is G7 major suspended, but this chord gets actually played only once because it immediately moves the top note again, this time to G. So G, D, G which is G major suspended without the 7. And why is this so interesting? It's because the progression that we have been using all through this song has a lot of energy, creates a lot of tension, but it never quite actually resolves that tension. It sounds to me like it's crying out for something like...
That's it. A sharp major. Like, for example, I'm your biggest fan of all of you until you love me. Papa, Papa, Ratzin. A sharp major. And maybe something newer. Don't you know I'm no good for you? Again, A sharp major. But that's exactly what the G7 major chord is doing here. Because it's introducing the D and the F from the A sharp major chord that it's sort of missing. However, this G7 major suspended chord being suspended doesn't actually resolve the tension perfectly either. So what we're doing is passing quickly from the G major 7 suspended to the G major suspended without the 7. Which for reasons, to be honest, I don't understand, makes the progression explode and collapse back into the first chord. So this is what we get. That's basically it, but this is important. If you learn to play this song by watching this video, I need you to make me happy by recording a video of yourself playing this song and post it in the comments below. If you're not making that video, you can make me happy anyway by liking, sharing, subscribing, you know, the typical things. Thanks for watching.